Let's start in three. In three, <laughs> two, one, ignite. Hi there, my name is Lila Growler. I'm Woo! a member of the new UMass Chicken Club. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today mostly about meat bird production because that's what we're doing here on campus. Um, and I'm going to start by talking about your normal industry meat bird. Alright, so the first thing about these guys is you're going to have to bring food to them. Um, it's often grown like across the country and you need fossil fuels to transport it to them, as well as chemical pesticides to grow the food. Um, you're also going to need a lot of other fossil fuel inputs um, to heat and fuel the barn in which these animals have to live. So you have to control their temperature and um, their humidity and ventilation with these systems. You're also going to need to transport them away from the facility where they're grown to where they're going to be processed, and then that final product to where they're going to be sold, you know, across the country to KFCs and McDonald's. So this is a huge, another huge fossil fuel input. These chickens are also going to create waste, which has to be man manually removed from the um, facilities where they're grown, and there's a lot of waste which causes a lot of pollution. Um, your average meat bird facility will um, produce around 600,000 birds per year, and a lot of chickens equals a lot of waste. Um, this picture down here, that's a common management system for this waste. It's often spread on fields, crop fields as fertilization, and it can run off into streams and river causing nitrogen pollution. Alright, so this system is called vertical integration, and this is what we see a lot with industrial meat production. It's when one company like Tyson or Purdue controls all aspects of the industry from hatching to feeding to slaughtering. Um, it causes the um, producers to not really be self-sustaining because they have to rely on these companies. So how do you break free from the system? Well, you can go to the farm and buy your own eggs or you can grow your own. Um, and it's really a piece of cake. So I'm going to talk to you about what we're doing here at UMass. But there's a few ways you can do it. You can raise chickens, you can let them out in your backyard and just have them run free. That works. You can have a permanent um, coop situation. There's a lot of different options. Or you can use a chicken tractor, which is what we do here at UMass. This is our chicken tractor. We built it from some salvaged soccer nets, so it didn't cost us anything. And the purpose of this is to optimize nutrition on pasture. So you move it around every day and they get lots of nutrients and don't waste you know, anything, and it also fertilizes the pasture. So let's look at our new cycle. The sun is our fuel. Um, it fuels the food for the chicken as well as the light and the heat for the chicken instead of fossil fuels. And it also feeds bugs and critters that they're going to eat, which gives it a very um, diverse nutrition. So it's a cycle instead of a linear system, and the chicken then poops and fertilizes its own food, which is pretty cool. You are also part of this cycle. Um, you harvest the chicken, whether it's for meat or eggs, and get energy from that. And you can go back into the cycle by using your food waste um, to either feed the chicken, because they're omnivores, or to fertilize the pasture, which they will later eat. So besides being a very sustainable system, there are some other good things about raising birds on grass. Um, it's good for their welfare, because they can display a lot of natural behaviors, like dust bathing and foraging, things like that. There's also some health benefits to the chickens that, um, you know, are kind of stupid, but I don't really have time to go them. But for some downfalls, you're going to deal with predators, weather situations, <laughs> you're going to have to do a lot of work to, um, you know, building all your infrastructure, and you're going to have to get to know your chickens. So you're going to have to rotate this tractor every day or every other day. So what are you going to have to do? Um, depending on how many chickens you have in there, you're going to have to rotate it every day, every other day. You're going to have to give them fresh water, and you are going to have to provide them with some um, diet supplement because they can't usually get everything off pasture. Um, so there's a few breeds you can get. This, these guys are your the normal industry bird. Um, they're called a they're Cornish Rock Cross. They grow really, really fast, and they get really, really fat, and they're delicious. Um, they only take six to, weeks, six to eight weeks to raise, but they are kind of lazy out there on pasture compared to these guys, which are a mixed heritage breed, which is an older genetic line. They take longer to raise, around 11 to 12 weeks. But from observation so far, they're doing pretty good out there, eating a lot of bugs and grass, things like that. Um, so when you're done, you're going to have to slaughter if you're doing it for meat. And there's a few ways you can do it. You can do it in your own backyard. You can bring them to a slaughterhouse. Or you can rent this thing called the Mobile Poultry Processing Unit. Um, and it's a really great way to bring communities together and do this outside. So overall, um, it's really easy to go to the grocery store and buy chicken breast. And sometimes 
you don't really think about, you know, the impact on the earth, the impact on you, and the impact on the chicken that you're having when you do this. And it's pretty easy to just go in your backyard and get it as well. So thank you.